chakazwa ngewa direct gamchira ne pano pa NR TV pa chirongwa chinonzi Gidani Chezea Gidani Chezea is a show where we take you through post independence Zimbabwean music genres from where they started from up to where they are now and I would like to say to you welcome to the fourth season uh, we have been running uh, for three seasons so far and we've entered our fourth season and you have been with us we want to thank you so much for the support that you have been showing us now entering into the fourth season we have decided to also enter into a new stream of gidani chazea when you look at post-independence zimbabwean music genres there are certain genres where we are proud to say the influence is largely our own even the names that we create these genres from are largely zimbabwean centric Let's talk about Eben Grooves. Exactly the point I'm trying to put across. Eben Grooves is our own. You won't go anywhere in the world and speak about Eben Grooves and someone will tell you it comes from anywhere except Z I M B A B W E, home, Zimbabwe. And to start off to kickstart this particular sweet session, I have in the studio one of I would call the founding fathers of the Eben Grooves movement. Uh, I was way in primary school I think uh, those days when I used to watch songs like uh, this and this one Do you remember these songs and I have the man in the studio today. Well, uh, I bet uh, just like myself before I got to um, meet him in person and talk to him, I bet Alexio Gwenzi. Well, you know him as good child and we have him in studio today. Good child. Dar. It's good to see you, man. Thank you so much. It's good it's to nice see to you too. Flesh. It's good to see you also to match the voice with the face. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, you, you know, there's something I've been saying a lot um, uh, to many of the guests that I have had on the show. And uh, this is the thing. The people I used to watch on TV when I was young, way back in primary school, when they come on this show, they somewhat still look the same. It's 20 plus years later and they are still the same. Do you guys have some magic trick that you used in the days of old and said, okay, it's <laughs> just what I I think if you're a TV person, there's a lifestyle that you live. Yes. Uh, you like to take care of yourself. You like to take care of your skin. Uh -huh. You know, so it's, it's just always like that to say, TV. you know, so that's what it, it is really. Uh, beautiful. Um, now, let's get to know you um, as Alexio Gwenzi and also much more deeper as good child because I believe there is a lot to learn about um, this uh, body of a person and the body of an artist. Uh, we would like to start of course with Alexia Gwenzi because before good child there was just Alexia yes and um, let's get to know him if he has any musical background or if he is the founding father of music in his generation. Yeah okay so Alexia Gwenzi I uh, was born many years ago I grew up in Kwekwe small town uh, in the ghetto and um, when I was in primary school most of my friends would go for rugby, hockey, cricket, tennis but I always found myself in the choir you know we had this uh, you know music teacher she was Japanese called Miss Sato and we were fascinated about the piano so I would go for lessons I'd go to see her play you know that kind of stuff and when she left for Japan another Japanese came his name was Mr. Kato and also I was just there, I really enjoyed it so much. When I went to Iowa, I was at Quaker Junior and then I went to Guinea for high school in Gweru and most of my friends were doing all these other things. I was doing drama and choir, you know, and our choir was number two, number one in national, in national competitions. So that really fascinated me. I was, and also being in church, I grew up in the SDA and you know now, SDA and music. you know stereo my notes no, you know that kind of thing yeah. so that's 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 my background in terms of music no one else in my family has ever done anything to do with music but uh, so it really began with me and that's been Alexio Gwenzi um, pretty much before good, child. before good child yes so the transition from the Alexio who is fascinated about pianos uh, with Japanese teachers um, joins choir drama how does he evolve into becoming 
good child. I then went to a school called Chaplin High School. Uh, oh my goodness, I shouldn't have gone to that school. <laughs> so then I, I, people started calling me Asha, because the way I would dress, you remember my do-rag? My mustache, my leather, my leather suit, it was my leather suit, I didn't think it was a rag in Asia. Yeah, guys, I'm a sofa. I'm a sofa, I'm a suit, I'm a sneaker, I'm a sneaker, I'm a boot. Oh, no, over all my stunners, Nima. So people used to call me Asha. Anyone who went to, to Chaplin know who, who, who Asha, Asha is. So, and then those days, there's also a group called Shower Power. So we would, me and my four guys, my friends, would go, we'd sing in church every Sunday. Ten my songs, the Shower Power. And then, when I got to my variety show, I ended my gigs, my vish, I did no Roma songs, and Asha. And I know when I was at Guinea for the Ember Foot, my song, and a degree, and a Bini Man, you know, that kind of thing. So and then now, around 2002, 2003, that's when Eben Grooves really broke out. Tain's gonna Decibel. Decibel just come out odious and tired. I think going to Kambarami and a happy birthday. Nana Plaxi just when you can and a sunny Makalima, Iran a Delani Makalima. Ah, that's when I went to Hewa. Yeah. I started writing songs in school. I was like, I don't die. Yeah. Nah, that was full rich. That was full rich. I was doing education for that. So that's when I started, you know, I started writing songs. By the time I finished my A's, I had I already had a full album. You know, I was writing my own songs. Soon after school, then I recorded my album. So that's that's the transition from mm. from that era to Good Child. Yeah. Good child. Mm. So, so I, I thought, you know, when you were explaining, especially when you spoke about being a chaplain, yes. so you know what I thought? I thought probably maybe you were transitioning from the face with a chaplain where I show her and doing a hand face of chi 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 or zoka or kuna matam mari so I'm going to go good child so good child was bad child wrong direction eh? wrong direction good child was bad child but you know what yeah maybe you were going to ask me why good child so so for me I think I, you can you can attest to this I've been that artist we could even if you google you never find any scandal you know H Metro Zim Celebs what not it's intentional when I called myself a good child, I wanted to be a role model to the youngsters. I believed, you know, these youngsters always look up to you and we want to emulate what you do. So I thought if I call myself a good child, number one, I become a role model to the youngsters that look up to me. Number two, it sort of helps me to keep in line to say, E, by the way, <laughs> did a good child. You know, so it really it really helped me to, you know, to sort of maintain that sort of good name and also be a role model at the same time. So we're going to take a short break and when we come back then we'll get to know more about him and his career. Also talking about his first biggest break. How did he enter the scene and rock the place? But more after this short break. Welcome back uh, to the second uh, segment of Gidani Chazea, a show where we are taking you through post-independent Zimbabwean music genres, uh, coming from all the way where they started from up to where they are now. We want to explore the depths of them. We want to see who has done what. And we also want to see if our music is becoming any better. Are we evolving in the right direction or are there things that we need to improve? And we can only do that if we search within our own history. So here we are talking to Good Child, whose real name is actually Alexio Nguenzi. Oh, what a surprise. I didn't know he was Alexio. Well, the only Alexio in the music industry I knew in Zimbabwe was Alexio Kawara. But anyway, we have another Alexio in the building. Good Child. Stop trying to make me call him Alexio. His name is Good Child. That's what I know. So here you are. You have written a whole album by yourself. You pen your own music and you're so passionate about this. You're in there. When you enter, I would like to believe it's like the common story where you just enter, but it's not the time that you pop. Or am I wrong to suggest that? Which song do you feel like catapulted you onto the song where Zimbabwe is like, good child? So, you see, being in a small town, we knew that for you to be big in the music industry, you have to be from Arari. It was, it was, it was, a, it was a sad and thinking about it sometimes it gets me emotional yeah. the amount of work we put in um, and people just ignore you because you're, you're from Kwekwe what, what is Kwekwe you know 
it was, there was a time when it was really, really difficult to break into the, onto the music scene. So for me, I was just doing it because I loved it, but I didn't really think people would notice. It's when I got a call, um, you know, from guys from one of one of the biggest TV stations. At that time, it was only ZBC, you know, to say, ah, so I wake up, up. So when I took it to radio, that time Power FM was now in Gweru. And Kwira Train, Gweru, Nosia CD, Ovwenda Den. So for me, you know, you'd, you, you'd submit your CD, then you go back home, listen to radio every single day, just in case one day. Now, I left my CD in Gweru. By the time I got home, People wait. Mango kufuna phone number. That's not my cell phone. Where phone number landline? You don't say. Tans go song. Ya kupa radio. You don't say. So ya kupa radio. Why in room buzz? Do we? You don't say it wrong. That guy did trade. That guy did buzz. You know. So it was really for me. It was what? Is it this easy or it's a good song? So we then did a video what, for was it. That, your first song? that was my first song ever. Iwe fadza i kundi si ayini. You know. So we did a video for it, we took it to ZBC TV. I got called. We are, your video is video of the week. They had a, a TV show in the Sunday, Sunday edition. So every every week they would do a video of the week. So ah, the Kira Bas, I got a little interview, Papa. So for me it was like, ah, okay, 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 you know what I mean? So that was the first song that I, I produced and it was the biggest song. And people actually argue to say, Nanasi, it's still the biggest song that you've ever done. And I said, okay, fine, if that's how you guys see it, then that's, 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 that's what it is. Yeah, it's, it's, it's way so much of a big song. I mean, uh, when we think about Good Child, when we list your catalog, it's an injustice for not to mention Iwe Fadzai. I mean, wherever you see written Good Child, Iwe Fadzai is part of that list. You see, and that's a good thing. Shout out to you. and. Um, Congratulations, now you're here. We're talking to you. I was way young then, I would like to tell you, but we still vibed to that kind of music. Now, the, the interesting things that happened around that time, I want to understand the modeling of the genre of uh, urban grooves, yes? As it uh, gradually became a much more accepted genre in Zimbabwe. Uh, which roles did you think played for the, the genre to be as it is today, as we recognize it to say, ah, woman, akuna genre mo Zimbabwe, yakambo pisa, kunge urban grooves. Okay, so let me just um, also assist in clearing this myth. Yes. Urban grooves is not a genre. Thank you. It's not a genre. Urban grooves was an umbrella term of different genres within. It, it, okay, urban grooves was like, more like a movement. So it is a movement. It is a, it is a movement. We had, zim, we, we had dance or artists. We actually we had Zim dance or artists. Yes. People like Sniper, uh, Sniper. if you know, uh, there's also Nembo Bobuai, there's also Yombri, Mad, the, you see, yes. all these guys. So hip hop, Stana was there, yes. Leonard Mapfumo, XQ, yeah. Maskiri was there, Master you know, Nasty Tricks, C Blood, hip hop was the RB, some of us. Uh, Trevor Dongo, also Cindy, Betty Makaya, Terry Gwadi, Pauline Mafrik. So um, it was a genre, it was not a genre, it was, a, it was like an umbrella term, or it was a movement for these young upcoming artists who are singing Wargood Dipata from the... Uh, from the traditional, the, and uh, coming to urban grooves. So it was young people doing urban grooves. <laughs> okay, makes sense. Makes sense. Makes sense. Because the genres that you've just mentioned are urban related genres. And these are grooves within the urban system. Urban grooves. That's where it came from. Ah. You know what I mean? So I think what really pushed this this not genre, but this movement and culture is the government policy. Uh, the 75 percent local content which then transmitted to 100 percent local content at some point you know um that really exposed us because you'd listen to only local music on radio from uh, 6 a.m to the next day so that really also helped us to push our uh, culture and movement for people to like to appreciate it and look man most of these artists were amazing artists we're talking of Betty Makaya, you know, we're talking of Roy and Royce, Decibel, Ngoni Kambarami, we're talking of Trinity, we're talking of Chamembe, Chugutiro. It was just an amazing go boys, I choosy, you know, it was just an amazing movement. So it really, really, really was big. It was really big, yes.
well, there is a lot of uh, seemingly chaos, but we are getting to understand in the third final segment that we're getting into soon after some uh, messages to get to understand if it is for the good of the industry or for the bad of the industry. And also a key question that we're going to be looking at, asking good child, is Eben Groves dead? Please keep watching. This is an interesting one and you might need to have a proper answer to that one. Keep watching on NRTV channel 288. Welcome back to the third and final segment of Gidani Chezea. My name is Mr. Dobby. Ndino wako, haikuna watika, kuna chino watikisa, jino watikisa, jino watika. Wawana manja. We have good child in the studio and he has been telling us about some interesting things really uh, from how he was just Alexio Gwenzi uh, learning the piano in school um, and uh, transforming to a good child where he was penning his own music and then submitting uh, Iwe Fadzai um, at a radio station and then uh, everyone calling him Baba Tanzwa Nambare Nyupa Radio and all that and, and we also uh, discussed uh, what he thinks about um, Eben Grooves and we also got to learn uh, that Eben Grooves is not actually genre there are many genres under the umbrella of Eben Grooves it's Eben genres uh, that are being listened to by a group of young people a movement it is and now we are interested in knowing from good child a, a key question uh, something interesting we have been hearing uh, less of um, the old crop of artists uh, and whenever they come it's one song at a distant time one song at a distant time i understand you also have a new gem with pachiera uh, and um, these are some of the things i understand also sindim nyavi has a new gem Th that's how we have been listening to you apple nepap after urban grooves they might actually wonder out does that mean that Eben Grooves is dead or is there something that we are not really appreciating and understanding that's happening around the Eben Grooves movement? Okay, um, let me say the movement is, is dead. Yeah? The, culture is dead. the culture is dead. It's not there. But let's not talk about it like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> let me tell you. Eben Grooves created a platform for all these youngsters and our whole team and our voice, these kids. Um, so for, for anyone in that category to say, that's when you start doing my campaign and I stop drug abuse and stuff because it doesn't make sense. They're actually supposed to go back and ask for advice, get wisdom on how they can handle some of these things. Urban Grooves is a movement, yes, it's dead, but we've got artists who have stayed in it in the game for a long time, people like an XQ, yes. who are doing bigger than even some of these some new of kids, you know what I mean? Yes. You know what I mean? So it's, we, we cannot really say, of course, and also let me tell you this. When we were doing Urban Grooves, we were younger. No responsibility whatsoever. moms, moms You know what I mean? You rush to the studio, you go for shows, you get a plus break. But you almost never responsibilities. But now people are growing up. my families, my demands are no wonder. And unfortunately for our industry in Zimbabwe, we're still lagging behind even the amount of money that we make as artists. So no money kids are going to charge you. So that's why you see people come in here and there because of the passion. You know what I mean? But you focus on the focus is now yes. on So that's why you see less of the artists um, from the old era really, really focusing on on music production. Yes. I see. It, it actually does make sense. Although it, it, it had, uh, get me to uh, uh, want to be interested in asking, do you think there is an opportunity of resuscitating the movement, not necessarily to say bring in the old crop of artists, but to say have the new crop of artists have an understanding of what Eben Grooves was and carry from where the old folks left off and keep on with the movement as a Zimbabwe trademark. I, I don't. I don't really know uh, if it if it helps anything okay. to have a movement whatsoever, but within every genre, like for hip hop. It, it, it helps them to create a movement as hip hop artists, yeah. you know, to push their culture, you know, do shows together, collaborate, do this and that, go on tours as a team. It really helps. 
Because yeah. as, as a single artist, for you to be able to entertain and waste all the time, it might be difficult. But if you can have a little bit of Wollaton, a little bit of uh, you know tomato sauce, a little bit of chili, it makes everything exciting, yeah. balanced. Uh, same thing for dance and all these other genres. But to have a movement and people moving as a group together, now because of social media, you know what I mean? So I don't really know how it how it anything. I don't really know. I don't really know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no that, that's quite interesting. And uh, just a, a comment on the broad spectrum of music in Zimbabwe, not just limited to uh, the urban sound only, but to the broad perspective of music in Zimbabwe. Do you think, comparing with the olden day and now? we are improving or do you think uh, we are degrading as far as music in Zimbabwe is concerned? I would say Zulipa 2. Tell me what side. On one side, because of the advent of the digital media, you know, and also technology, there's better quality music. Yes. You know what I mean? Unlike Udara, Shanga is limited. And we've got more artists also in the game because it's Ravurwa, so to speak. Kudara it was difficult to record. Yeah. You put in, in, I remember when I started Naga Gazera DM, I, I called Delani Makalima. I can did the good amount of songs I go back cassette. I to look for, yeah, I to look for um, a radio, you know, you know, Daba, to him, but he record Then I put the tape uh, post office. You can talk about one month before he got the tape, you know, that kind of thing. You put an appointment three months before, but now there's a studio everywhere and there's better quality music. So I think it's improving. Also, there are better platforms to distribute music like Apple, Spotify, even your Facebook page. You can share your music. We got the Nasmak scene, Maniru Zimbabwe, is on a song. So I think in terms of platforms and distribution, I think it's improved. Um, but I think I'm, I'm worried on the other side. I'm worried now because the quality of the music. People are just jumping into the studio. Ongemba song, you know, two minutes. And after a month song, you know, I don't like it. Uh, Apana, that you know, hard work in Esqua into and thought that yeah, that's put in the music is half baked. Unfortunately, there are very few artists who are really doing well, you know, and making good quality music that lasts, you know. So that's 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 the situation that that, that we have in, in in the music industry at the moment. Well, th th thank you for a, an honest and just commentary. I mean, I mean, it's weighing on both sides of the coin. And uh, for interest's sake, because uh, I know a lot of people jumped out of their seats when they had Good Child was in the studio. And in their minds, they're thinking, what are we expecting? You have spoken about, um, because of growing up, there are responsibilities and stuff, but that is not stopping you because of passion. Once in a while, you come back to give us something. What are those some things that we should be expecting from Good Child? I've done a, should I say, banging collaboration with T. Gonzi, yeah. a song called Fire Fire. The video is on YouTube, you can go and check it out. I've just done another collaboration with Pachera. We're working on the video, it's going to be banging, no doubt. It's coming soon. So I think um, you're going to be seeing more of those collaborations, videos, collaborations, videos. That, I, I think basically that's what you can expect from me. Beautiful. A quick one as we are rounding up. Social media is what we're doing now. Where do we find you? Right, my Facebook page is Good Child, G W O D C H I L D, and then my other social media platforms, Instagram, Twitter, it's at Good Child G C. One word, Good Child G C. Beautiful. That has been a Good Child, Alexio Gwenzi, and thank you very much for watching. We appreciate. Um, the effort that you do to sit down and then watch and listen to these conversations and we believe you are also learning something from listening uh, to this uh, rich history of Zimbabwean music. This is Gidani Chazea and you watch it uh, every Monday uh, from 5pm here on NRTV DSTV channel 288 from me Mr. Dobby Baboako we are out. <laughs>